Hello, mathematicians, and my name is Mrs. Sears. Hi, and my name is Mrs. Gaudet, and welcome to At Home with APS. Today we're going to do some math um, with you, and we're very excited to go ahead and get started. The first thing that we want to do is we're going to go into our counting sequences, because it's very important that we continue to keep that counting going while we're away at our closure. So the first number that we're going to start is we're going to do some skip counting, and we're going to skip count by our even numbers. And I'm going to see if we can do 52 through 78. But while we're counting those numbers, I want you to reach over, touch your knee with one hand, and then on the next number, touch your knee with the other hand. I'm going to see if I can get this right. So hopefully we can do OK. Again, we're counting by even numbers. Are you ready? All right, here we go. 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, 64, 68, 70, 72, 74, 78. Wow, that was very good. Everybody, did you get some exercise in that? All right, our next sequence, we're going to be counting by odd numbers. We're going to be doing the uh, movements. We'll be, we'll be flapping like chicken. So put your hands up. Get them in there. So every odd number, we're going to flap those arms. So we're going to start with 23 and count by odd numbers. 23, 25, 27, 29, 31, 33, 35, 37, 39, 41, 43, 45, 47, 49. Perfect. Oh, wow, that was really good. Oh I thought gosh. you were going to fly away. No, I was going to <laughs> mess up probably, but that didn't happen. <laughs> Yay! All right, we do not want to forget to do our counting backwards because it's just as important to be able to count backwards as it is forwards. So this time we're going to be skip counting backwards by tens and we're going to start at 210 and end at 90. But while we're doing those multiples of 10, I want you to snap your fingers. OK, are we ready? Here we go. 210, 200, 190, 180, 170, 160, 150, 140, 130, 120, 110, 100, 90. 80. Oh, I went too far, but that was just so much fun. I thought I was going to mess up right there at the decade. And Lots we're going to get out of breath counting back. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, now we're going to be working on counting by the clock on the hours. We're going to start with 4 a.m. and go to 12 p.m. But the movement that we're going to be using is we're going to be taking our hand and we're going to be moving it in a clockwise fashion, going back, starting at the top and going around for every hour. So let's start 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 p.m. You got it. All right. That was very good. I think I'm getting some exercise and, and trimming down while we're doing this as well. All right, the next one we're going to do is we're actually going to keep using that clock, and we're going to be going by half hours. And this time, instead of moving my arm all the way around, I'm just going to come up like I'm raising the roof, OK? So I want to start. We're going to start at 8 AM, and we're going to go to 1 PM. So ready? We're going to count by those half hours. So let's do 8 AM, 8.30 AM, 9 AM, 9.30 AM, 10 AM. 10.30 a.m., 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m., 12 p.m., 12.30 p.m., 1 p.m. Good job out there. You guys did a very, very excellent job, and hopefully you've got some more movement to do. 
We have one other one that we were going to do for you today, and I'm wondering if you can possibly do this one at home. This one is to see if you can skip count by the quarter of an hour. What would that quarter of an hour be? Are we talking 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? What do you think the quarter of the hour was? You're right. It would be by 15 minutes. So here is your challenge. We want you to count by the quarter of an hour. See if you can start at 8 a.m. and go to how about 10, 15 a.m. I bet you you can do it. And pick a movement that you would like to do as you're doing that at home. Hopefully you've enjoyed counting those sequences and you'll be ready to go for our next routine, which is going to be our number of the day. So let me tell you what our number of the day is going to be. Actually, I'm going to move this one down here because that comes up for the next one. The number of the day today is 1,000. 367. Let me say that again. We have 1,367. <laughs> Let me see if I got those digits right working on my fingers too. All right, so if you have a, a piece of paper at home, I would like you to go ahead and, and get that piece of paper out right now for me because we're going to go ahead and include this in our math journal that we're keeping for our every day for our number of the day. This is one of those routines we can do every day, and we want to make sure that we're picking different numbers and we're thinking about how that number works. We're looking at things about whether that number is odd or even, how that number is bigger or smaller in relationship to the digits. We're looking at how we can represent that number. So the number of the day is a very important routine that you could be doing on your own with just about any number that you find or a parent or a guardian, uh, somebody who is in a grown up at home could also give you that number if you're interested in, in doing this routine at home. So our number again is 1,367. As you can see, you can go ahead and fill in this chart that we're going to be working off of today. We have some different initials that are represented in the number of the day. We're going to try and figure out what those initials mean. There's one that says TH, and it's kind of a little bit further over than the other ones, and I'm wondering, I think that TH might represent something that we have in our number of the day. If you said it was thousands, you're absolutely correct. That's going to be where we place our digit that is in the thousands place. It will be under that TH or thousands. The number right to the right of that has an H initial. I wonder what sits right next to the thousands when we're thinking about our place value. Well, if you thought about it being hundreds, you have to have ten hundreds before you can have a thousand. So that number must be our hundreds place. That's what we're going to put our hundreds digit in there. Well, as we're moving on down the line, we know that we need to have 10 tens to have a hundred. That T must be a 10. Notice I just left a T there because we have a T E N S for tens. We have a T H O U S A N D S for thousands. So we know that this has got to be the tens and not the thousands place. We'll need a couple of more tens in order to have those thousands. What do you think that O stands for? Oh no, I'm not sure which one. No, that O stands for one. So we want to make sure that when we're placing these um, digits in the correct place, we're going to place them in the place where they belong. So let's go back to our number of the day. Our number of the day was 1,367. You guys have probably already figured this out. Where do we think that, let's start from the, from the backwards part of it. Where do we think that seven has to go? When we say that there is 1,367, what is there 1,367 1, of? Ones, truthfully, yeah. That, but the digit that we're going to represent that the one is in is going to be our seven. All right, what about that six? 
We say it's 60 when we're pronouncing it, but really it is six tens. So when we're counting by our tens, we can go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And we know that that, that word, that six ten, that says 60. So we want to put that six tens in here to represent that we have six tens in that number. We also at this point do have 67 ones that are in there that if we wanted to go ahead and count by our ones, we would have to count up to 67 in order to get that. But we're at our hundreds now. So let's think about our hundreds. I have 1,367. Which digit is going to go in our hundreds place? Oh, if you said the three, three, because when I said 1,300, that was the digit that we need to put in our hundreds place. Again, if we were looking at this, we would have 367 ones. We would have 36 tens. <laughs> and we're going to get ready to go into our thousands, which is pretty exciting. So how many thousands did I say that we had? We said one, 1,367. So we would need to put our one in that thousands digit. Please take a second and make sure that you fill in all the correct digits that go within our place value chart and that we have the proper notation of 1,367 as our number of the day. So there's a couple other things that we want to do with this number because we are kind of exploring the different attributes or characteristics that this number has. One of the things we want to know is, is that number odd or even? How would we know? Well, if you thought about that last number, that ones digit, that ones digit is the way that it's going to tell us, is that number an odd or an even number? Well, it ends in an odd number. So it must be an odd number. Please circle or put odd on your paper and let us know that you know that 1,367 is an odd number. Very, very good. You did great. A couple other things that we want to make sure that we look at when we're also thinking about our number of the day is we want to look at the relationship of this number to other numbers. Well, we want to know what is 10 more or 10 less than that number. Well, if we were wanting to know what 10 more is going to be, why not go to the column where the tens are? What did we say the tens were before? We said we had six tens. If I needed one more 10 to go in there, how could I figure out what that would be? If you said count by tens, that would work great. We remember we were going 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 70 would be the next 10. So if I've got to rewrite that number to make sure that I have it showing 10 more, I can't just write the 70. I've got to think about how would that number look if I change this 6 from the 10s to that 7 to show that I have 70, which would be 10 more. See if I can write that. So we have 1,000. I always know that my comma says the thousand, 300, we want to say 10 more, 77. Hmm, that was pretty good. Do you think you can do 10 less? Well, I bet you we can. So we said, again, we're going to look at that tens value. If we think about, again, what would be 10 less than 60, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, Ooh, you would be right. We would need to change that digit that's in the tens place to show that it's five tens instead of six. Let's write that number. One thousand three hundred fifty seven. Perfect. Great job. What about one hundred more? Should I go to the thousands to look for that? Oh, 
No, silly. I'm going to go over here to the hundreds because that's where it belongs, right? So if we need to figure out what is 100 more than 300, again, we're just going to go up 100 more. So if we have 300, the next number 100 wise is 400. Let's see if I can write that. 1,000, remember that comma says 1,000, 400. Do I need to change my tens? Oh, no, no, don't change those tens. 67. Because all we were changing was our hundreds digit, just like all we changed here was our tens digit. What about a hundred less? Well, again, we're going to come back to this hundreds column. I wonder what is 100 less than 300? 100, 200, 200, 200 would work. Let's see if we can write that. 1,200. I'm not changing those tens, and I'm not changing those ones. 267. Let's see. We've got it. It's one last big one that we're going to do, and it involves the thousands. Wow, we get to use this number now. How many thousands did we have before? We had 1,000 in our, in, our in our thousands place chart. So let's see. 1,000, if I'm counting by 1,000, the next one would be 2,000. Yes. Do I need to change my hundreds, my tens, my ones? No, because all I'm doing is changing what the place or what the value is of that digit in that place. So let's see. We said it was 2,000, right? So let's do 2,000. Don't forget that comma. 367. Wow, that seems like a really big number. Again, I'm going to have to think of what could be something that's really big like that that we could count that big of a number to. That would make me tired doing that. Maybe if I'm out looking at the stars one night, I might decide to go ahead and do 2,367. But boy, my brain would be just too tired to do that right now. One last thing we want to make sure that you do is we want you to represent your number. I've already gone ahead and represented that number for you in base 10 blocks. So when we write this this way, we call it base 10 notation. So I drew a cube. The cube, remember, re, re, uh, represents that we have one, uh, 10 one hundreds, okay? So each of these flats that we have that are hundreds, we had 10 of those that combined together and pressed together to make a cube of 1,000, all right? So if I'm wanting to write that in expanded form, I could say that was 1,000 plus how many flats? Our flats, remember, are 10 tens, 10 of those rods pressed together, 10 tens to make that 100. We had 100, 200, 300, and we had our rods, which are our cubes pressed together, 10 each, that represent our tens, and we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, so 1,000 plus 300 plus 60, and finally our cubes, which we count as one each, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, to give us our number of the day, which is 1,367. Wow. What a fantastic job. This has been a very long number to have to work with today, but we did it. Congratulate yourself. Pat yourself on the back. You did an excellent job. We're going to now bring Miss Gaudette back up on the stage, and we're going to talk about another routine that is really fun that you can do at home. If I can keep it there. It does not like to stick. How many of you have ever 
heard the song, one of these things is not like the other. It might be a song that you might have heard on another TV show that could have been aired on this network. I don't know. <laughs> but we were trying to figure out one of these things doesn't belong on this chart that I've made. And we want to know why you think one of these things doesn't belong. There's many reasons why they could not belong, but we want to hear some reasons why you think one of these would not belong. What's the first thing that you notice about this chart? Well, you probably said they look like playing cards. Do you have playing cards at home that you could probably do this with? Yeah, maybe you do. But you don't necessarily have to have playing cards to be able to say what things don't belong and which things do belong. You could be looking for everyday items around your house, anything that you can find, and you could say, that thing's not like this or that thing's not like that. You can come up for reasons for why they don't belong. So we're going to talk about which ones don't belong today. So I want to say something about some of the numbers. We noticed that some of the numbers are there. We might be able to say, hmm, maybe those numbers might be a clue for why they don't belong. But I'm going to ask Ms. Gaudette, which one do you think doesn't belong and why? Which one would you say doesn't belong? I feel the five does not belong because it is black and the others are red. Wow. I did not notice that. So you're saying that that five is black and all the rest are red. So the color is different. So that's why that five shouldn't be in that little selection or collection of things that don't belong. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Let me see. I was thinking that the 10 didn't belong. Do you know why? I have an idea, but let's see if you have the same oh, one as me. Oh, let's see. Well, I was thinking the 10 didn't belong because each of these, the 5, the 3, and the 7, only have one digit. Remember we were talking about those 1s before? They're all 1s. They're not a 10. They're not going to move over into that next digit value. There's actually two digits there, so that's a 10. So I think the 10 didn't belong because all the others had one digit. What about? So I think, um, I'm going to say three doesn't belong because three has three hearts straight in a row where the others have groups of five. Wow. Hmm. What about that seven? That, that seven to me, I think doesn't belong because it has a diamond. And I mean, I'm thinking that the diamond doesn't have these other heart shapes in them. Because I can see kind of a heart shape with this club. I can see a heart shape for sure here on this 10 and this heart shape that's over here on this three. But I don't see a heart shape with that diamond. That diamond is, is kind of like almost like a square on its side. I think they call that a, maybe a rhombus too, that you may see that. So I don't see the hearts that I see in those. That seven's not going to belong because it doesn't have the right shape. The hearts are what, or, or the hearts and the heart-like shapes are what's there. The, the diamond doesn't have that. What do you think? So I'm going to say the 10 doesn't belong <sighs> because I had another one for that one too. It is. Uh, did you say this one? It's even. No, I didn't say that, but I was thinking that. Are odd. Ah. So I'm going to say 10 doesn't belong. Wow. Now I don't know which one to say. <sighs> I think I'm going to go back to that five again, because if I'm looking at this and you said that 10, and I know my fact families, I know if I do three plus seven, I could make a 10. So I don't think that five belongs in there because this three, seven, and 10 is a fact family. Hmm. All right. I'm going to say the three doesn't belong because this looks like on a die what the five would look, the groups of five might look like. 
But this three, that's not how it would be on a die. Hmm. You're right. You're right. You're right. Hmm. I think, I think you've got that one correct. Ah. <sighs> What about the seven? Because I know we've talked about the five two times. I know we've talked about the 10 two times. I know we've talked about that three two times, that seven. What else could I do with that seven? I've got it. I know all those multiplication fanatics out there that you guys are thinking. I know that five, three, and 10 are all multiples of 30. So however I count them, if I want to do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5 times 6 to make 30, I can do that. Or I could do 10 3 times, or 3 10 times, and I'd still get 30. 7 doesn't go into 30 at all, so it must not belong. So I'm going to say they actually all belong, and oh. I'm going to base it off of yours. Okay. All right. So you told me. Let me get out of the way that here. Because 3 <laughs> plus 7 equals 10. I'm going to say 5 plus 5 equals 10. So I don't think any of them don't belong. You're probably right. I think there's a reason we could come up for a lot of different ways on which one wouldn't belong. And I invite you guys to think of some other ways that you could figure out which ones don't belong or which ones all belong. Uh, when you're at home and thinking about other ways that you could have looked at this particular problem. Here's a hint. Sometimes there's not anything that's wrong. So we could find a reason for anything not to belong. It's just really be looking at what you have around you and how can you make those comparisons. And we did a lot of math just talking about the different things that we talked about here when we were figuring that out. All right. So I hope you guys enjoy that routine. The next thing that we're going to be working on with you is actually a game. And I wanted to point out that you should be able to be printing these materials off on our website, um, which would be the numeral cards if you so need them for this particular game. Um, we would just ask that you get a grown up to um, have you print these off. Um, you're going to want four of each of these one through nine numerals. Um, and then to get some scissors and to be able to cut them out. So when you're finished with them, they will look like a card deck. If you do not have these, we can also use a card deck. Did you remove those face cards? All right, I'll have do you that doing right that now. while we do that. And then we also have this um, sheet if you do not have a die at home, a number die, okay? So if you do not have one of these at home or you weren't able to print one of these that you could make at home, um, you could also use this. And this would be in place of um, the very last part of our game, which is going to tell us who's going to win the round, the smallest or the largest cards. And those print out, and I just kind of identified them with you know, a little sticky dot, but you could put an X on them so that you know that you'll have two separate piles. You'll have your pile that you're drawing or you're shuffling out to your partner with, and you'll have your um, pile that's going to be able to decide who won that particular round with the smallest or the largest. Okay, so this one is called Place Value Battle. We're doing a lot of place value today, aren't we? Talking about tens, talking about ones. So what Tammy did, uh, what Miss Gaudette did, excuse me, is that she went ahead and took out all the face cards. Um, she left the ace in. The ace is going to count for a one. She also took out the ten. So what we have is ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine in there, okay? And the object of this game, and I think we're playing it to the hundreds, right? So... There's a couple of different variations that you can play this particular game. If you were wanting to do just staying in the, I'm looking for my number chart. <laughs> if you were wanting to stay in the, in the tens digits, then you would only be dealing out two cards, okay? Or we would only be selecting two cards from our piles. Um, because we're going to work into the hundreds, we're going to be pulling three cards each time we want to go to play the game. And we're going to be seeing strategically, because we don't know what the, what, the, um, 
result is going to be until we roll the dice to who won the round. Um, if we roll a one through three of that dice, that means the person who had the smaller of the place value, <laughs> they win the game. If we, draw, if we roll a four, five, or six, that means the person who had the larger one would win that particular round um, of the game. So we're going to need to um, be keeping track of that. And the only way to be I'm trying to think, is there a way we could keep track of it on our thing to see who got the point? No, the, whoever get, wins that round gets the cards. Remember? Oh, that's right. Whoever gets that round gets the cards. Thank you for reminding me of that. And so the person who has all the cards at the end is, of course, going to be the winner. Like, we'll see how that works out. So once you get those cards, you want to shuffle them up. Miss Godette's already done that for us, and she went ahead and um, dealt them out. Um, half and half. Well, you can have more than two players in this game, so just keep that in mind. If you had three players, you would deal them out in thirds, or four players deal them out in fourths. So you ready to begin? Yep. Do we understand the rules of the game? All right, so we're doing hundreds. So let me tell you, I, don't, I just want to make sure I'm out of the way. So I have a, a four, a six, and a five. And I have a seven, nine, and four. Now, we're, it's for us to be strategic about how we want to place those because I'm going to try and go for the bigger number. So I'm going to, I'm just, I hope my die is lucky today. I was rolling lots of good heavy dies today. So I'm going to think about my number being 654, okay? So that's the number that I'm going for. I'm hoping it's going to win when I roll that die. Sorry, I'm giggling right now because guess what? I decided to go with the larger number too. Oh. So hopefully it's the larger number. <laughs> and yes, I did do that before she started to talk. So I rearranged mine to 974. So let's see, roll the die and let's see who won. Uh, see, it's on my side. I There's a... Two. And remember, if you get a one, two, or three when you roll that die, or if you had picked up one of the cards that said smallest, that would mean that the smallest of the numbers is the one that wins that round. I get it. I them. took All right. I'll take those from you. Okay, shall we do a couple more rounds? Yes. All right. So again, you want to grab three cards because you're playing for hundreds. If you were doing thousands, you would need four of them. All right. Ooh, I don't know what she has. <laughs> So I have an eight, a four, and a two. So let's see. I want to... Wait, 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 wait. What? What do you have? I have a three, an ace, and a five. And don't say anything because I want to do mine first before you okay. try to give okay. me away. Okay, I don't... I'll be thinking okay. about it. I've already got my decision, so I don't care what she says now. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> let's see. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try it. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to just do a little bit variation, but I think I still have a bigger number than hers. So 482. Let's see. And I went for the smaller number this time because Let's see. I'm, I'm going to let I'm her roll the dice, it. see if she gets lucky. I have a 135. So I'm going to roll the die this time. <laughs> she got a four. So that means, remember, four, five, and six means that the larger number is the winner on that one. So you really don't know who's going to win on that one. You just kind of make the best number that you can. <laughs> All right, I picked three more. All so right. here are mine. I have eight, seven, two. I have a five, an ace, and a three. And I'm going to reorganize mine before I say Should anything. I not say anything about which way I'm going to do, smaller or larger? Well, you can after I organize mine. Oh, I want to okay. be able to make, <laughs> I'm making a, I'm making a little, going to figure this out. Because I am not winning. And if you guys saw us last week, we're very competitive against each other. <laughs> All right. So I made mine. I, again, just tried to put them in any uh, order there. But I, I'm, again, trying for that bigger number. We'll see. 531, okay? Let's and see. I, I moved mine to 782. Okay, let's see. Shall I try? I got a five, but I think you won this round. <laughs> I wouldn't Finally, have been able right? to get close to that number <laughs> with my cards. 
All right, let's see. Ooh, ooh, I got some big numbers here. Okay, I have an eight, a six, and a seven. And I have a six, three, and an ace, which is one. Okay. Hmm. Six, a three, and an ace. What could she be wanting to do? Don't tell her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go again. I'm, I'm working my theory on my big number here. <laughs> I have 876. Let's see. And I went in the middle, 361. All right, you roll. See if it, it's any better for me this time. Five. <laughs> she got a five. What does that mean? You're right. Uh, larger number. <laughs> this works really well. Let's see. Yeah, I bet I'm just it looks curious really well, how it's many linear. more. Yeah, we got two more rounds to go. Let's see. Hopefully, I'll get all of the cards, but no, we still have some more. <laughs> all right. This time, I have a nine, a three, and a four. And I have an ace, which is a one, a seven, and a five. I'm going to go a little different. Let's see. I'm going to be strategic. I'm going to try. Let's see. I have 394. Here, let me move mine around. No. <laughs> I have 751. All right. Shall I roll the yep. die? It's your turn. This time I'm going to actually use one that has numbers on it. So maybe that comes. Three. Smaller number. 300. 94. She has all the luck, man. <laughs> she has this game down. I've got weighted dice. No. <laughs> all right. Um, actually, I have four cards left. How many cards do I you have? Three. have? You have three. Oh, you must, we must have not dealt it right. But let's just, I'm going to throw that one right there. <laughs> I have a two, a nine, and a six. That's the issue. I have a jack. Ah. Oh, do you want that, that card one? Back. Perfect. All right, that's why it was off. Okay. I have a two, a nine, and an eight. What did you have? Uh, we're very close. I have a two, a nine, and a six. All right. Let's see. What should we do? Let's keep this. <laughs> okay. No, she would still do it better there. Hmm. I'm thinking because she has almost the same digits that I have, and I'm, if, if she goes higher, then she's still going to be higher than mine. But I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try lower. Let's see. I'm going to do 296. Let's see. All right. So I went 286. 89. <laughs> We're still very close. This could be a very close round. There we go. Let's see. Smallest or largest? Largest. 296. Oh Woohoo. <laughs> Did I get all those cards? Well, I, I, I well, won two rounds. rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to finish this round? All right. The way we're going, man. All right. I'm we can finish this round. All right. <laughs> Oh, I didn't really shuffle mine very good because I, I just got the very last numbers that I just had. I so shuffled. let me shuffle them a little bit more. All right. All right. Let's see if we can. If she I can wants grab to a... obliterate. <laughs> Wait, did I say that Obliterate. Right? Obliterate. Yes. There we go. Okay. Three, seven, five. Three, five, two. Oh, I was going to say if she had a seven, then that would be like, let's just figure out how we want to do this. Okay. Oh, you know what? I almost have the same cards as our which one doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. I, I have, I could make a which one doesn't belong out of these cards. All right, so I'm going to say 735, or 7 times 5 would be 35. Hmm. I'm making <laughs> a 532. All right, so we want a bigger number? Come on, bigger number. Sticks. It hit it. It doesn't count. Roll it again. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. No fair. Four. Still gotcha. <laughs> All right. I'm, I might as well go to the very end, the bitter end. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Maybe. I, I have a nine, a seven, and a four. I have a seven, an eight, and a one. Okay. You try this. 
I'm gonna do 794. Let's try. And I went 781. All right, I'm gonna let you decide your fate. Come on, four through six. Two. <laughs> she got a two. Yay! <laughs> All right. You're still in the game. You're I still am. in the game. I'm not sure how much time we still have, so we could do one more round. Or I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Okay. So you guys see the 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 how you play that place battle value battle, um, and. And it could be very good, <laughs> yay, or it could be very bad sometimes. <laughs> and then I, uh, did, did the little finger come over here pointing towards me? All right, so I'm gonna get set up for this next part that we're gonna do, and it is called, let me get this. I wanna be able to see my numbers that I came up with, and hopefully you guys can see those out there too. They're not sitting very well. Okay, so I have thought of a rule, and I want you to see if you can guess my rule. Well, first of all, before we do this, now let me explain what I drew up here. How many of you have ever seen this kind of a, a diagram before? Oh, maybe you have. You, you've seen it before. It's called a Venn diagram. That is V-E-N-N -N diagram. Okay, and we use it to do what? We're comparing and contrasting different things about something, okay? In this case, we're gonna be comparing and contrasting numbers that I'm gonna be putting into this chart or this diagram. And I want you to see if you can figure out what is the rule that I'm going for over here. So I'm gonna put in the first five numbers, okay? So we have a two, nine, 12, 21, and 14. So let's see, I wanna put that two over here. I'm gonna put the nine over here. I think I'm gonna put that 12 right in here. Okay. 21. I wonder if that 21 should go here, here, or here. What do you think? I'm gonna put it over here. And now I have a 14. That 14's gonna go right over here. Do you think you know what my rule is yet? Maybe you thought I was doing odds and evens. If I was, why would I have a 12 in the middle here? If I was doing odds and evens, maybe I needed to put it over here in these evens, right? So I'm still not really sure what that rule might be. But we got to remember things that are in this side of the circle are the same. Things that are on this side of the circle are also the same, but they're different from this side of the circle, right? And these things might be something that they both have in common. Are we getting closer to that rule? Let me place the next few numbers. All right, so we have 27, 20, 18, 10, and 15. So let me see. I'm gonna put that 27 over here. I'm gonna put that 20. That's gotta go over here, okay? Now I need to do my 18. I think that 18's gotta go in here. Okay, if I'm thinking that correctly, right? Okay, and then now we have a 10 and a 15. So our 15's gonna go over here, and our 10 is gonna go over here. Are we getting any closer, you think? Can you figure out my rule? Again, it can't be those odds and evens because if we're thinking about them being odd or even, I've got some evens right here in the middle. So I've got to figure out what do these all have in common? Okay, let's go to that last set. See if your theory is coming true. If I had a 30, where would that 30 need to go? Because 30 is even 
It also could maybe fit over here because I'm seeing something happening with some kind of threes. And I'm thinking our three was over here and we knew that the three times the 10 was the 30. <sighs> but I think it could go over here because I feel like these are even. So I'm going to tell you, it actually goes in the middle. Okay, so that 30 is going to go there. 33 is going to go over here. 16 is going to go over here. And let's see, what's our last number? 24? Whew, I feel that pull. It could go in either side, but it's actually going to go right here in the middle. Let's take a look at those numbers. Have you figured out what kind of rule that I'm going for? The rule... I know it has something to do with there's a 2 here. And, I'm, and I remember I thought something had to do with the 3s over here because I was thinking that, you know, these numbers had 3s in them. But when it came to 30, I was, wasn't really sure, did I need to put that 30 over here? Did I need to put that 30 over here? And it ended up in the middle. If I look at those numbers, 2, 14, 20, 10, and 16, those are all multiples of 2. If I look at 9, 15, 21, 27, and 33, I know those are all multiples of 3. What are the 12, 18, and 30? Could it be that they're multiples of both 2 and 3? Oh my gosh, you are absolutely correct. You did it. You guessed my rule. So, 2 would go into 12, what, 6 times? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. It also has 3 as one of its multiples. 3, 6, 9, 12. Same with 18, 30, and 24. So my rule was that I was working on multiples of 2 and 3s. And the, in the numbers that were in between or in this shared part were multiples of both of those numbers. Wow, that was pretty impressive. You guys are doing great at guessing that rule. All right, I'm going to invite Miss Cadet back up here, and we're going to have a little mystery for you guys to dis today. Do you want to do some mystery? So we have a math mystery for you. There it is. And in this math mystery... Get out of the way. I'm going to get out of the way. Oh, <laughs> I thought she was saying something to me. She <laughs> says, oh, no, the Albuquerque bug arium. So I'm, I found a picture of Albuquerque bug arium. Do you guys know where that is? It's at the Botanical Gardens, right? So the bug arium has been robbed. Uh-oh. I wasn't so, there. <laughs> Tell you. She robbed him. I, I figured it out. Right there. Let's see her. Someone has taken the eight-legged tarantulas from their terrariums. And it is up to us, the detectives, to solve it. So very fast, I have a question for you. Do you know what a bugarium is? This is a beautiful picture of the one from Albuquerque. But do we know what it is? Oh, all right. Yes, it's where we have a, a building full of lovely bugs. Yeah, not my so You can tell it's our favorite place. We're like, yay. <laughs> a terrarium, you guessed it. Here's a picture of terrariums. All it is is it has like an aquarium, but it doesn't have water, and it has uh, living things in them, sometimes snakes. This time we have tarantulas. Yeah. So here's the crime scene for you. We are in the Albuquerque Bugarium, and the tarantula terrarium is empty. This beautiful picture of all of these terrariums, the bugs are not in there. Let's interview the creator to find out what has happened. Well, I came in this morning to feed our tarantulas. I turned on the lights, walked over to the terrariums, and they were gone. I see. 
So how many were missing? Let's see. Each terrarium had one tarantula and three, four empty terrariums. I'm just so upset about this that I can't even think right now. Don't worry, curator. My partner and I are on the case. Thank you. Oh, please, please, please return my eight-legged friends. We will find them. My partner, you, and I. I know we will. We just have to use our mathematical reasoning to figure out who took the tarantula. Lucky for you, I already got statements from the witnesses who were at the crime scene. I have a feeling that one of them stole the tarantula. Cut. There we go. That person will try to throw us off the trail by giving us a mathematical statement that is wrong. Help me figure this out. All right, so we have our witness statements. Mm. Our first witness said, they were here this morning when I came to the Bulgarium. I even counted them, all 32 legs and everything. All right. So let's see now, what did the witness two say? Said the tarantulas were already gone by the time I arrived. None of the four tarantulas were there. And here are our uh, next two. Witness three said, what do you mean the tarantulas aren't there? Each one was there because I counted their legs too. Eight plus eight plus eight plus eight equals 24 legs. Witness four said, but weren't they in their terrariums at, the po at some point in the morning? I saw two terrariums on the left had 16 legs, and two, another two terrariums on the right-hand side with 16 legs. That's every tarantula, isn't it? All right. Well, who did it? Let's solve this together. Let's start with the facts we know. What information did we start with? Right? We started with that we know four terrariums, we had four of them. There was one tarantula in each terrarium. And we also know that each tarantula has eight legs, like an arachnid. All right, so. Now, a lot of the witnesses mentioned the legs. So I have to figure out how many legs on each tarantula. Oh, I already did that, hey, <laughs> eight legs. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I did it already. Woohoo! You and I, great minds think alike, right? And then knowing that each tarantula has eight legs, since it was said from us at the beginning, let's make a drawing to figure out how on those legs. You want so, this piece of paper? Oh, that's perfect. I'm going to put this back over here. So if we go here, I'm going to do this other side beautiful other. drawing. Everyone loves my drawing. <laughs> Woohoo! Maybe I, if I did it like this, it wouldn't look like a sun. So if we do this, so for all four, right? Six, there's my eight. Four, six, eight. If we start with this, with all of our tarantulas, we know we have eight, 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 and eight. If we do eight and eight, that's 16, right? Another eight and eight, that's 16 also. So who do we eliminate from our witnesses as not being the thief? Ah, this one right here said 16 on the right, 16 on the left. We eliminated them. 
We know that there is four terrariums because one tarantula by the terrarium. We eliminate that one. We know that 16 and 16 gets us 32 legs. We eliminated witness one. Who does that leave us? Eight plus eight plus eight plus eight it is not 24. It is 32. Witness three stole us. Stole our tarantulas. Bad witness. Ugh. All right. I hope they're punished. I want my babies back. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on At Home with APS. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.